cool so that works let's see um yeah the, the idea was basically that um you'd have a like an isometric view where you where you um, it's like a stealth game and i later thought that maybe you could use it to um to, to save somebody or some from an accident but the the basic idea that i came up with was like you walk to a door you ring a bell there's somebody inside that you have to distract so when he opens the door and sees you you can say rewind just go a few steps back and you fork that person so then you use the second person but everything you did stays as it is so you don't actually undo what you do but you go back in time split up yourself and go do another action to make sure that you reach your goal so you would i don't i haven't played braid so i don't know i don't know the game yes exactly so and and i thought that maybe you could have like a parallel time budget or something so what you would then for instance do is uh, use your second self to to rock around the back sneak in and when the the bell rings you knock out the person opening the door and then you merge with yourself again like you high five yourself and you merge back as one and continue you know something like that is how i envisioned it yeah sure yeah but it would drain the budget harder but i i think i thought that was a really nice idea i just don't know if we can execute it on time But yeah, I really, I, I could see like the entire game, like all the things I have to do, the outcome, I could see where it would be fun and interesting and like, I, I <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the focus will shift to level design uh, to complete the game, yeah. So I'm not really sure if, if it's a good idea for a jam. I just thought like, okay, it fit the concept. It's nice. It's not something that I've seen before, but uh, I, I've heard Braid mentioned twice already. So maybe it's not that <laughs> unique, uh, just something that I've seen. Okay. I just thought that, by the way, that I'm streaming, but nobody can hear you guys. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know how to add. It, it has desktop audio, but I see no uh, rates or anything. Ah, okay, let me see. Properties device ah, okay that would be <laughs> I actually I think you I think you might scare a few people. What is this? <laughs> cool. I'm going to check quickly uh, Twitch if it works. Nice. I just I'm wondering how I can actually view or hear this. Hmm. I really like the idea of taking the concept of 
board to win, so he divides the board into two for this. I don't know. Maybe not as many jam entries are doing that. Mm -hmm. I think as long as you have like the re element of it, yeah. you know. So like as you were talking about, like breathe in, like in and out type of thing, like the or being able to re win. Did you see the latest video from um, Danny? No. The VR he's one. Made, yeah, he, he okay. made Attack on Titan, where he's a giant who basically can eat little people he picks up in VR and stuff like that. What? Yeah. I have not seen this. No. no. <laughs> He posted it like yesterday. No, I haven't seen it either yet. He was, uh, I think he, he prepared that uh, a while ago because he was moving uh, flats yesterday. Yeah, um, he did mention in the video that he's oh, okay. busy moving. Okay. As I said, I haven't, still haven't seen the video yet, so mm -hmm. I need to watch it. Is he he's leveling up in life, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing your marketing for you, Nick. Oh, Claire's <laughs> going around promoting your stream, are uh, <laughs> Thank you. No, oh, you're partly <laughs> promoting yourself, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> we just happen to be here. Nah. Thank you, guys. Mm. Just. Uh... Claire, there you go. I'm just gonna be like social media manager. Woo! Let's I think see, we need you... need a little bit more use of you, Claire. <gasps> yep. I just checked the desktop audio is uh, is set up right now, so everyone. I, I heard it going off. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, if I can do sound effects, I'm very satisfied. <laughs> I'm a bit keen on like going towards the sailing and stuff like that, but I, I don't know if it goes too far outside the jam, or if you can make a good game out of it. If it just becomes racing, or what it yeah, could become. Anything involving wind is fair game, I think. But how do you see the mechanic? How do you see yeah. like the game working? Uh, it just can be be like collecting things within a time limit. It can be like trying to yeah, just do anything and put a time limit on it and then score it. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So That's would the uh, wind be like something you pick up and use when you want to? For it's like a little bit of a power up in a way. Like you need to keep collecting it, otherwise you lose the wind. For example. Yeah, if you're the one controlling the sailboat, yeah. For example. Yeah. You can also be just be a god controlling the wind, and then whoever people are in that sailboat <laughs> are like, you know. <laughs> Chris, Maybe like, like use the too. microphone to blow in, so you blow the ship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that exists in some games uh, on mobile, I see, which use blowing on the phone as the con uh, as a controller input. Don't yeah, remember I which game that was. I think I, I no. saw something on the Switch like that. Mm. All right, yeah. I think I've seen it around there. Yeah, I just don't remember which game it was. It reminds me of like the when Michael Reeves turned uh, the microwave that you had to scream at it in order to to make it work. Like, <laughs> I just see that in front of me. Like, oh my god, <laughs> that guy makes some crazy stuff. Yeah. Sam, I guess I've been storm, lightning, rain. I'm just looking through everything that's put down here. Yeah, for example, if you go with a sailing game and you're the one controlling the wind, maybe you like be removing rain and lightning storms uh, against, uh, and like let's say there's a, a sailing race and you're not really directly controlling any of the sailboats, but you want one of them to win, which is your one, and you're like moving obstacles of rain into the other ones, and maybe the, the gusts of wind are a bit uncontrollable, so you're like manipulating the forces of the world in order to like be in your favor but be against the opponents in the sailing regatta. I'm just thinking about the, the, the sailing regatta they have from, you know, from Oslo down to here at Tinsberg. Yeah. Just do that. And he's like, no, you want the king's ship to win. <laughs> <laughs> or you want some other one, you're going to choose them beforehand. Just some method or something. <laughs> but if you don't control any of the, if you like, don't, how, what is your stake in the game? You, you control the elements. Yes. For example. Such as, like, but lots of the elements will come randomly, but you can then overwrite them, like send the rain the wrong direction or 
And and no. would you like have a target to make a certain boat win or another boat lose or? Yeah. Mm. For example. Maybe like at the beginning of the game, you have to choose which one you want to win. Which one of the boats you want to win in a way. One or just have a designated one. Or even designated one, yeah. Mm. Or you could choose it as well, give it a bit more player. Scope group. <laughs> Draw some random boats. <laughs> By the way, hi Bruit, thanks for joining. Oh hey Bruit, how are you doing? Hype. Bruit hype. <laughs> see, see my see my, my social media skills. <laughs> yep, Claire coming through. Is Bruit considering to participate in Jam 2? Is he as crazy as us? <clears throat> I don't know yet. Are you Bruit? Is there room for one more? <laughs> I don't mind. Well, technically speaking, Krista and I, we're, we're one unit. So, oh, we can't just one, do we? We're one, yeah. yeah. It did say recommend like four people in the jam because it gets tricky to manage. But... Yeah, but I mean, we're, we're one. We're one person. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to just say. Like. <laughs> I think I'll uh, copy your game and post it on Jonas's, or for your message and post it to Jonas's server as well. Yep. Sounds cool. What, what's the message? Um, the message that I posted saying we're all human, fuck you, scum. Alright, right, right. Let's uh, do that. So, one. what camera are you using now, Nick? Um, that's actually uh, a Sony Xperia Z1, like the new, uh -huh. their Android flagship. I bought it a while ago. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm yeah. not in this server, by the way, just so you know. Ah, that okay. makes sure <laughs> Then I can find Tag you. Tag Tag Christer. Yep. A very small amount of Discord servers. I'm, not sure. I'm still trying to get the hang of the Discord stuff. You're doing well on Twitter. I'm doing well on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, have you posted it on Twitter, Nick? He has. Oh, no, the, the link. Uh, Brute says, now I just uh, try, tired from the past couple of days. Some family stuff was going on. All right. Uh, well, I hope your family is doing well and yes. take this Same weekend here. to recover. This yep. game jam, by the way, if you haven't caught it, it's uh, seven days, so you have a bit more time on it. It'll be until next Saturday. Yep, and we also will be not going uh, like hardcore 24-7, especially not for I seven can. days. But, uh... Yeah, we, we all have family to take care of and dogs yep. to walk or girlfriends to cuddle. <laughs> Wives to cuddle too. Wives to cuddle? Oh. Wives to cuddle. <laughs> Yeah. Brackies have a hashtag. Come on, Brackies. Where's your hashtag? Uh, Brackies Game Jam, got it. That's a long hashtag. That's uh, a long hashtag. Why, why is it not just the Brackies Jam? Yeah, I just tagged them in a tweet I did, I think. I didn't know that was an official hashtag. You see it on the itch page. Ah, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. I can always tweet about it later when we have more of an idea. Maybe a, a first visual or something. What? No, I'm, I'm just doing it all now. <laughs> we won't have visuals until at least tomorrow. So I, I think like today, like if you manage to land an idea, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. Really fun. Do not take a photo of me right now. The only fun. thing that that I like that worries me for a sailing game is all the water stuff, and having oh, it, it look good and like cloth physics and there's. We, we got uh, assets for that, Nick. We do, yeah. <laughs> We, we own the ocean one. I think like if only one of us owns it, we can use it. Okay. That as as depends on the asset, asset, I think. Every license is, uh, can be different. But Given you... that uh, Z probably has quite a lot of these assets already. It's the yeah. ocean crest system. Oh, it's not free? No. No. Hmm. I thought I saw it on GitHub. Oh, this might be another one. It might be a bit overkill, I've never used it, so it might be dangerous to like rely on a jam on an asset oh, like gosh, that. Yeah, we've never tested before. But how does wind look like? Lots of anime line streaks. Yeah, or just oh, like a vertex, you know. You could you could create like a small vertex and just rotate it slightly, slowly doesn't have to be like realistic wind it can be a bit cartoonish oh that's a good yes. point because it doesn't have to be a realistic ocean i've seen some of the nicest looking ocean ever which was like just triangles 
Yeah, or just like you know, the, the, the uh, you know the the stuff that goes up and down in rows, like the, the mm. very like old style cartoonish way of, of having a C motion. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you could do that. That would look really nice. So like a two D game or. I mean, I was thinking three D. The camera could be locked. That would help things a lot. Lock the but I, I think yeah. in three D. Yeah, I think if you, if you like want to do some sort of force manipulation with wind gusts and stuff, I think you have to go 3D. At least I, I don't know how that would work well in 2D. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Brew, is just, Brew is saying that he can uh, help with uh, feedback and ideas. What, so. what about like a paper airplane? Oh, I like that. Ooh, yeah. Thomas has been thinking about this for 30 minutes now. <laughs> it's coming out. Okay, shoot more. What what is more happening with this paper airplane? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me on the pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that paper yeah. plane could be cool. Yeah. I'm just think I, I'm not sure how cuz it would be cool if you have like a camera following your design so maybe you can fold your plane yourself, make a design and just like have actually physics forces push at a certain area, but I don't know <laughs> how uh, feasible that is. I guess you fly around and have to try and pick up stuff that uh, gives you uplift. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's what yeah. I was thinking as well. That makes the most sense and then like try to stay afloat for as long as possible or something or collect them as many as possible in short amount of time. Or yeah, but that that would be just like controlling a plane. I think th the idea of you directing the wind would be better suited for the, yeah. the theme. Yeah. Don't you think? That's, that's a good point. Mm. I, th I think if we want to go like an actual wind idea that we have to focus on controlling the wind more than objects directly. So yes. But if it flies around, what, what are you controlling? Are you locked to the plane? Or? Well, when you had your, you said like the paper plane, I saw like an, an uh, a, a either like in house, uh, in a house or outside where you have like to dodge areas or navigate around like your your course and you have to strategically like add wind. Um, hmm. So it, if you throw a plane, it will float for a while and then it will start to take a nosedive at a certain point. So you'd have to time where you place your wind and, and how you angle it. So like, do you want to give it more speed and you do it more from behind? Or do you want to give it a lift and you do it more at an angle, something like that? That that was what came to me, but... but yeah. you, ah. you think it's also like a side scroller, or like, you know, a side view or like, you know, um, having a direct like uh, look at the plane in a way? I thought like if uh, at least when I, I visualize it, it was like a fixed distance camera uh, mm. focused on the object where you can pan around so you can direct where you want to place the wind. So maybe look at like that you can't go ab uh, above a certain angle and just choose how you want to add the force. But Yeah. Mm. I think that would be awkward though when it comes to controlling a plane. Like either you have direct plane controls or like controlling the wind of a plane is just gonna be weird. Like is that gonna feel good to play? I don't know. I, I think it like um wind manipulation would probably make a lot more sense when it comes to like a sailboat. Because then you have a two dimensional space, you don't have to worry about rolling and yawing and you know. Yeah, that's gonna be really no fun program as well. Yeah. But I think uh, with like 2D movement, uh, it makes a lot more sense. Uh, but don't get too caught up in what I just said there. It was just yeah, an example. That, that's game. just a flying game, basically. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and the game was made in relatively short time. It was worked on like months? Yeah, a few months last year, I remember. I saw those people working on it on Twitter. Ah, OK. Mm. Are we going for the sailboat manipulation game? <laughs> I'm just, can, can you flesh out the idea a bit more for me? Yeah, okay, we can try, we can try. So one approach was like you control the elements and like lots of random elements spawn as you are kind of this, um, you can consider like a, 
you maybe you play as the element of the wind or something and you can manipulate like blow the rain away or blow the lightning away and they will then impact the other uh sailboats uh which are all sailing and like they're all like uh ais sailing the sailboat is going towards a target uh and okay. for example like they're going often in a regatta you will f sail back and forth right yeah and often the what will get awkward is on the return path when you go back again uh, that the wind will go in the wrong direction and stuff like that but if you also throw elements into it then like like you have to remove the lightning from you know frying your boat uh then maybe you got to blow the wind in an awkward angle compared to where you want to go uh, and give your enemies an advantage in this um this race so it's basically a boat race well but uh, with sailing you can pretty much sail nearly directly into wind as long as you know what you're doing yes obviously this would be a bit more of a um awkward sailing game i guess <laughs> it would be like you'd need to kind of control the wind a lot more and if so how would you go about that oh you just like for example drag the cursor in the direction you want the wind to be controlled mm -hmm. like drag left to right like point the wind direction Great local wind gusts or something. Local wind gusts. Like uh, Angry Birds, you know, right. just pull and and yeah. yeah. Mm. Birds said like, "Oh, you're talking re wind. That's creative." Yeah, that's just one of the the ways to interpret it that we've talked about. So, one of uh, the yeah, things we like. The re part in re wind. Yeah, just. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the things I've been questioning. Like, what what, what are we doing with the re part? You're just repeating it. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we can do it that you could like go back also or rewind do it time again or, yeah. yeah you were hit by rewind lightning rewind in the wind rewind in the wind <laughs> yeah. one of the first things that i thought about with, with like the rewind like the doing wind again was like that you have a certain time frame when you do uh, send wind that uh, it amplifies or that if you create like a stacked pattern that you could create like a vortex or something like that but yeah. that'd be really cool if you can build it up and like then it has an impact afterwards so you yeah. kind of be a bit strategic about it not reactive yeah. is that what you're thinking or do i misunderstand yeah that was one of the the, the things to to re uh, to add the re more there like okay mm. you, you stack and uh... right 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 cool kind of ideas, yeah. i'm starting drawing sailboats i am <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I don't just get you the surface you can draw on my crystal. I am perfectly fine drawing with a cursor. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm just gonna like cry. When you just get it. I'm gonna get you that. Ah, <laughs> oh, like I, I was some... missing out on this. <laughs> Look how much fun we're having. This is, this is lightning. Oh, I, I can draw with yellow maybe. Yes. Claire's giving me a laptop. A laptop? I want a laptop too. If you're handing them out. No. <laughs> Are you handing out laptops there? Yeah. You get one, you get one, you get one. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is not Mr. Beast. <laughs> or Oprah, yeah. It's also not an instantaneous, you know, just like delivery system. It's on the top there, you go. Okay. So if, if we make a sailboat game, the, the, the things that I can come up with is like, okay, how many how many boats are we gonna have? Um, will there be like a single screen or will it be like a longer course? Um, there will do, be do you have fifteen boats? Sorry, fifteen boats. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you don't have any. <laughs> and uh, what, what was the other question? Yeah, I was just thinking about. Like you could have like a primary objective to like make John win the game. Huh? Uh, yeah, you could ha have like secondary objectives game. where you have to to make sure that uh, Peter doesn't finish the cross the finish line or something yes. like that. Oh yeah, you can make like oh, yeah. multiple objectives, for example, mm -hmm. and then you can score them. Like oh, for example, oh well, here's a good one. That's a good idea, Nick. What if your job is to make the boats arrive in the correct order yeah like a rigged race so this boat is supposed to be number one that's supposed, supposed to be number two that one is supposed to be number three and then you got the chaos of the elements on top of that right 
And it, oh, the cool thing about that is that you could actually have it be random generated how the outcome would be every time so that you'll have a different challenge every time, like different <laughs> boats to pay attention to. And you could create like a story if you, if you have extra time afterwards, you could create like a story time of a, a mob boss making a deal with uh, a god or something for like, or with the devil. Uh, yes, exactly. Thor. You can make a, a deal with Thor. There's betting involved. And yeah, yeah. As Thor. I just don't know how corrupt Thor is <laughs> to allow this. No, but he was influenced by Loki. Ah, okay. Loki. Okay. <laughs> so you have the backstory covered. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's just be based on her, right? <laughs> what do you think, Brut? I guess he's still hanging out there. Is our idea forming into a jam game, or are we just being absolutely Take silly? Moments. And whoever is hanging out there, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm being Nick's commentator today. Yeah. Thank you. Chris has got a bit more practice, I think. I see my wife is actually in the, in the stream. <laughs> Hi, the breaking hit. Oh, maybe he has oh, a good oh, idea. What are we doing today? Are you participating in Jam 2? Are you, are you going to help? You know, people sequestrate and everything. <laughs> I'm obsessed with right now. She's, <laughs> she's helping by letting me be here, I think. No. Oh, thank That's you. nice. Thank you. What's her name again? Cherries? No. Gisela. How do you pronounce Giselle? that? Uh, it's Giselle? like the the. Uh, Giselle. Uh, yeah, Gisela. It's it's there is a French ballet. Uh, that's written like that, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gisela. Yeah, but uh, she doesn't like the pronunciation like that, so. Okay, I'm okay. so sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we will practice this. Drew is like, were we just talking about Thor? Yeah, we were just thinking, we were just talking about Thor. Yeah. He's being cheeky here. The Bre Brewit was uh, asking for a recap of the idea, and the breaking hit said, um, he's also joining, but he already had an idea. He also thought of the wind aspect, but uh, is going uh, for a different approach. All right. But yeah, we're really thinking about uh, the wind. I think we have three viable ideas at this time. That's yeah, true. We do, yeah. We do. So. We have fleshed out the sailboat. We have um, have a basic idea for uh, uh, was it unbinding a bandage of a mummy? Yes. No, yeah. No, actually, re re bandaging uh, mummies. Oh, right. Yeah. Got yeah. Okay. We got to go the right direction. Yeah. And uh, but, a stealth game, but uh, yeah, I think we tend to gravitate towards uh, this manipulating wind and sailboats. But maybe we are not original at all by doing it that way. I mean, like maybe everybody else was like, "Oh, wind is like the obvious answer to rewind." Nah, I'm not too worried about that. If if we can make something that we think is fun. And not work. done to death, I think that's a win. So yeah, you have a very valid point there. And uh, the breaking uh, breaking hit asks, what genres will you be doing? Um, I'm not really sure if it's it's it will be a semi uh, indirect racing game, but there's also like a strategy uh, involved. So not really strategy sure. Racer. A strategy racer, I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> D N I W E R for the name maybe. What does that stand for, Brewit? Denver. Denver. D N I. Denver. Hmm. The breaking hit Brewitt. likes the it's idea. So. We already have people that like the idea, so that's good. <laughs> we wind, we wind it. Brewitt. That was cool, Brewit. Ah. ah. We are dumb as yep. potatoes. <laughs> My dad would spot that right away. Oh, <laughs> and the I talked about Michael Reeves before, but he, he does like this D and D campaign and he has the second character right now where he just reversed his name. So I've, I've encountered reverse names recently and I, I still didn't see it. <laughs> Wiener. Yeah. That's what I read. <laughs> I just love seeing everybody's like little things moving around. It's like, 
And then you just put a blueberry in there. Sorry, I've been struggling to sign in. <laughs> Sorry. I had to, I'm on Claire's laptop. I'm trying to get back into. It was a bit faster for me. He's like, I'm just gonna move everything around. Oh, you you drawn with a pencil, Claire? Yeah, I was drawing with a pencil. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I'm also drawing with a pencil. Yeah, that's what I've decided to do. You be... can take off the keyboard if it's bothering you. No, the keyboard is fine. I like the keyboard. Where are you drawing? Huh? I was drawing up above here. I was right. drawing here. No, I have Unity installed, so. We could start if we wanted to. Mm. I mean, I think it sounds kind of uh, complex. Like it's going to take some time to make this. Yeah, that's what I was, was just thinking about. I'm usually the one that goes out of scope. <laughs> uh, are, 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 do we have a scope issue? <laughs> Maybe. Like, okay, so what, we, what part we, of it do you think is out of scope then? We we need like a bunch of effects. We need like physics, and we need the the uh, AI assets. moving towards targets. You mean Almost. multiple AIs? <laughs> yeah. Well, multiple. they can all use the same script. Um, but yeah. I think like the the idea of making them arrive in a designated order is really cool. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You you could make that easier on yourself by just like having forks in the in the in the route where you can easily see which one would be easier to navigate and just use that to manipulate where they go and, and use that to change the sequence in which they arrive. Yeah, because we did that a little bit with the cinema machine path. Ah. I mean, was it called again? Waypoint yeah. system? We used the waypoint system. The, they follow that, but it's a bit more like randomized. Where they go along that path, so you could almost have like little, you know, um, path conditions in a way, multiple different paths that they can choose between. Yeah. And that could be randomized. Yeah, if making you know the, that before. Making the AI movement, I'm pretty sure we can just use our existing system and that worked quite all right. Hmm. It's just making paths and then making the AIs like randomly move along them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're doing this 3D, right? Yeah. 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 So we maybe we should find like pictures that uh, could serve us uh, yeah, telling us where to go. Like, yeah, mood board next. Yeah. Sure. The breaking hit asks, what game engine will you be using? And we'll be using uh, Unity for this. Uh, yes. 2019.4 branch. Are we, uh, did I confirm was uh, 0.4, we're doing the LTS? Was it not 4.6? Okay, we're doing 4. 4.6. Oh, uh, I just installed. I installed it from like the the Unity Hub. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I, oh, sorry. I was mixing up the 2018 version. It's 2019.4.6. Yeah, okay, not the. 18. Okay, I can install something else if you want to, but uh, no. I have no. the, I have the LTS version uh, installed. I'm just installing it right now myself. So. Yeah, it's also the latest version. Came out two yep. days ago. Uh, we're not using 2020.1, uh, the break of night, because uh, <laughs> we're doing a jam and we don't want Unity to get in our jam. <laughs> yeah. You can get a bit jammy. We, we'd rather no stick with the LTS. <laughs> a fellow moderator from Jonas's Discord has joined, so uh, hi, uh, Yummy Brown Rice. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Thanks for joining. How oh my gosh, I just found Quaternius has viking ships link, link it Perfect. put it in the discord uh, i can't like link directly to it screenshot um, works too but, but yeah screen, that's, that was a good idea that's, no problem what am i looking for i'll just i'll, I'll just a take a screenshot now so you got all this different like can i have a cruise ship proper ship a viking ship <laughs> a raft um, but I sent a picture. Yeah, I see. So we're going with the Viking <laughs> ship, are we? <laughs> well, that would well, be the... the other tiny ships as well. We can just add stuff on it. I just, I just saw that and I was like... And the team is 75% Norse, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, technically speaking, 50%. And then I'm not kind of... Well, I, have, I, I think you count, Clark. Okay, yeah, they've taken you. <laughs> <laughs> they've taken they've you. stolen me. Yep. Maybe use the big cruise ship as something that other ships have to avoid. 
brush. Oh, that's this. a good idea. Just as if like you're in the Ocean of Fjord and then you'd have lots of cruise ships, you have to <laughs> get around them like. But I think we have to scale it like 10x. The 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 sizes seem to be off a bit. <laughs> yes. You got a point. That's a tiny cruise ship. Yep. It's a toy cruise ship. <laughs> yep. I've got a fish pack above there as well, so you can just have some fishes. Because, I mean, like, if we were going to prototype this game, what we would need to do, like, the minimum viable prototype of this game would just be boxes on the floor, and then where you make, for example, green boxes is what you're supposed to get into the goalpost, and then some red boxes, which is walking the path, and then we need to add some wind forces and rain and lightning, yeah. which can be, like, floating circles which uh, no, are obstruct and like push back and uh, start burning try to not, not let uh, your uh, bunch of boats start burning because that's bad for business because you're making deals about this race and you're trying to maximize profit or am I going just completely off guys <laughs> oh <that> sounds good <laughs> I wasn't paying 100% attention, sorry. That's I was trying why. to put the... <laughs> no big deal. Oh, I like that. I like that. Can we just really paste like that image inside here? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I already put the link there and I downloaded it already, but... Uh, co uh, copy... Yeah. Bo boom. That works. So, who's going to do what? I did a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nick did a thing. <laughs> uh, who's going to do what? Um, isn't that like everyone does a bit of everything and then we don't get anywhere? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, Chris is best with Shader Graph. Yeah. Um, you, you're, you're very good at that type of stuff. I'm familiar with the Shader Graph. Yeah. So, I mean, Thomas is also like that. Does as much. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, we know we know Nick's definitely going to be the the coding guru here. <laughs> <laughs> Who has maybe the most experience with physics of Unity in terms of like making forces and things move around? Is that maybe Thomas? Oh, uh, not really. I haven't really dabbled that much with physics, but uh, I mean it's a good opportunity to do so. Okay. I was okay. kind of wanting to do the AI, but I can do the physics. All right. I, mean, I think like, if you want to do the AI then I definitely think like you should do that then. Because I mean, if somebody really wants to do a certain part, then you should do it. Yeah. Because I think then that's going to be the most fun. I think what we need to do is just make sure that we get like the, the start scene set up quickly. Like lay, make a, a small layout of water, have yeah. something that can float on it, even if it's like a square box or a pill shape or whatever. So do you have some something to start from? I mean, we could still collaborate on things. We don't have to do four separate things. No, that's no. true. I don't think so. that's a good idea anyway. Uh, but uh, in in terms of like, um, yeah, uh, we need to make some models probably, or do we not? Like, can we just find some cloud models? Well, use placeholders for now and put Place in holders. some real models uh, if we have time towards the end, maybe. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and you can probably find assets around and about, etc. And then, yeah. uh, if you have time, put on post processing and like make things look elegant and snazzy. Yeah. One of the things I'm just gonna have a look at is what we wrote for missions a week, where we have like a complete plan. That's true. Uh, yeah, because um, for a previous jam, we've written down every asset that we needed to make and made a whole list of like everything that needs to be done and that's probably what we should be doing now. Yeah. So yeah I've got like ah uh, this one is quite good actually. Uh probably share this. Thank you to Breaking Head. Good luck on your game. Good luck. Yes. But yeah I'm, I'm just time. gonna send you one from our um previous uh game jam. I don't know whether you'll be able to open this. I'm pretty sure it says anybody who has this link can see it. Only people add it. Okay. Anyone with a link. For anyone uh, that also is participating in this jam and wants to share what they've done, feel free to join the Discord and uh, come say hello. So. Aww. Aww. Yeah, I just... That's 
Is that Snooty Land? Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you. So one of the things we did when we had uh, our last game drown was the fact that we kind of like broke everything down into what assets we needed, what controls we were going to have, brief story, project description, elevator pitch, core mechanics. Um, uh, link, <laughs> open the document that Claire linked. Yeah. Oh, okay, let me see. This is just one of our, our past game drowns so because like a good overview of like breaking everything down so it's easy for us to see what we need to do. Was that almost? No, just my mind. Sure. Can work on that. So I'm create uh, another one of these, for example, and then we just like work through it so that we've got everything that we want. Game names going to be etc. Well, I think we might already have a game name. Brut asks, can we make VR games for the jam? Yes, you can. But if you want to, one thing, have people play it so they can rate it. It's yeah. a terrible idea to make VR games because there are not that many people who can play them. We actually and... uh, talked about the like the mummy game. To make that a VR thing, but yeah, the, you seriously limit yourself if you you build a VR game. The best thing is if you can make it web playable. Yeah, true. So that should be certainly our goal as well, like do a web export if that's possible. Yeah, because that's everyone can play that then. Yeah. Do we agree on that, by the way? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> just coming up now, but I think we uh, that's a smart move. Which means our graphics should be very light and uh, easy to load in. Then you need to add the WebGL support for the install if you haven't. Ah, yeah. oh, I haven't done that. It's a good no. point. Add modules. Add modules. WebGL. Done. <laughs> Everyone got in there clicking <laughs> now. Okay. And, it, and it rolled back for some reason. <laughs> Man, the, the, the Unity awesome. Hub is so weird sometimes. Because like yesterday, I was trying to install a specific version of the of an older branch, just because I have the same on my laptop when I work on the game, and it just if I um, left Android support enabled, it would just not install. It would roll back at the end and just disappear. So weird. So could I have access to that uh, Google Doc as well? No. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm creating a new one for this. Okay. okay. Um, but this. you should have access to that. It's a uh, link for everyone. If you have the yeah, link. No, I had. Oh, never mind. Now it works. Yeah, it's because I, I didn't enable it, first of all. Okay. Um, but now it should. Link can. True. And this is the one for the game right now. You got like an example of what we done beforehand. Let's see. Mm. No. <laughs> this, this is my forte punch. Yeah. Okay, we can also probably mood board in there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Did you just write that in? Like, how's everybody today in the chat? Um, yes, I did. Christy, you're awesome. You're, you're like you're like half in the stream here. I, I'm Nick's uh, stream you're manager. Saying, you, you need to be like the stream bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to steal your stream deck. Yeah. It is so good. You need to get that device. Oh, nah, I still need to finish like my. Uh... It's not the same thing. Like, it's the only wall. But, <laughs> but it's, it's all... nice. Sure, sure. I like that one. I added the, the link for Quaternius' stuff. That's good. Yeah. I'm just going to mark that as more green. There you go. What? I'm going to focus a bit on colors and stuff because, you know, that's my forte. Yeah. Sure. And while I, I think that the, the reverse name is clever, I think people, I, I'm not sure how useful it is because. What name? D N I W dash E R. <laughs> how are people, even if you try to pronounce it, it's like, eh. Well, it, uh, it doesn't fit our game at all to use that name uh, because our game is not that much about rewinding as, as much as about wind. 
Uh, so the name would have to be around, around like wind and control and something like that, I think. Elements. Wind winner or something, and then you highlight parts with the color to pit, pull out rewind or something. Maybe something with weather gods or something. It's always a bit easier to come up with the name at the end, though, in all fairness. True. Yeah. Never Maybe. do it at the beginning. We'll leave that as the, the uh, how do you call it? Like the working Maybe title? We can have a code name. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, <laughs> I mean, maybe resale is a good code name. Sure. You're shaking your head, Claire. No, no, no. I, I was just being a Claire. Just being a Claire. Being a Claire. I really like that picture you just got that first time. Yes. I was just wondering. Do you mind if I like increase the margins here? Can I do that? Yeah, that did not mess up the rest of the document, okay. We are a data. Outcome. Oh. Okay, I'm going to get the game. Human. So. Manipulate wind. Using the supernatural forces Thor gave you to control this and make bank. Something like that? That sounds good. Uh, and maybe that's the elevator pitch, but. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, definitely the elevator pitch is something we would refine, I think, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Control the race outcome. Mm -hmm. and do you want to have this as where do you want to put this because i i i read the part about the mission squeak no that's fine that's one yeah okay what's, what's make bank make bank make bank what, what do you mean what? Still money. yeah get lots of money oh, make some money secure the bag i don't know what the the, the popular way <laughs> currently is money here. there you go <laughs> yes Mm. And are we are we going for a low poly style? Chris is deciding well, right now. We're gonna use the Quaternion, uh, yeah. Quaternion's assets then, yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, low poly is also a lot easier to kind of you know yeah. execute short time. Yeah, that's true. I, I what I think we do is is use them as a placeholder, and maybe if there's time, quickly model something ourselves or. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys don't see a, a benefit to that? Nah, we will see if uh, the need, uh, you know, like maybe we want to modify the models or uh, want to change the colors of things. Yeah. Papa's in the balance yet. <laughs> My daughter just walked in, they're uh, swimming outside. So, oh, is it nice weather? Hey, it's, it's very, very hot in here. But I have the the AC going, so yeah, it's nice and chilly in, inside here. That's like he votes for an AOE style. Yeah, I just noticed. Oh. <laughs> it's vampires. Oh no, don't get Christmas started. <laughs> <laughs> we have a resident expert, so maybe not uh, not a bad idea. Well, I mean, age vampires can mean a lot in this. Like, we're talking about the camera angle being isometric, or... <laughs> Where was that game that you saw the other day? you really liked that we really liked which was like gta style let's say which was a boat what ah oh, man a I gta style with a boat so like you swim up um, and knock the no. person off hijack their boat or i thought that was the tips on it that sounds like an older game oh i'm gonna go into it i bet it's a notion somewhere I just found the weirdest thing ever. I just need to send this on Discord. Was it animate if I send it? No, that's a PNG. I need the it's a GIF. I'll be back in a few seconds. I'm gonna close some doors. Before you do that, just show what I sent on Discord. On the stream. 
Das Open hat den Weg in das Leben da. Oh wow. Oh, Earth is not. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I wanna know. Yeah, it's Twitter, I think it's Twitter. Well, that's pretty. So, I'm back. Okay, Nick disappeared before uh, he caught my message. Oh, were, sorry. Were you uh, thinking I... about the water, Kristen? Uh, no, for the water I just sent there, that was just for fun. Uh, Let me see what you I just wanted Nick to show it on stream. Unity shared it. Ooh. I like the, the low poly water. But isn't right. this very intensive to. Hmm. I don't know yeah, how probably. it's how it's done, but yeah, if it's by manipulating a mesh every frame, that's uh, a bad idea, I think. Yeah. Unless you like you need a, it. Now you need a geometry oh, you shader. A shader. Yeah, a geometry yeah. shader that that could be formed. Anything else? I'm not so sure. Yeah. Just vertex displacement with a little noise map. Or the challenge is then to make uh, make that the displacement affect the objects in the water yeah. yeah obviously we could also give a quick shot at uh, using that uh, asset we got uh, i can try to link it i just gotta find it the crust ocean system yes it seems like it's a bit overkill and wouldn't probably match the low poly uh, I wonder if I saw a low, po low poly approach with it, but yeah, it, it probably is overkill, but it seems like maybe it will just like solve our problems. Krista, do you remember that complete terrain shader thingy? Oh. And how much that cropped us up? Yes. There you go. Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned, don't use overkill tools. Okay, I'm trying to find it because I remember those pretty cool. But then ways. how can we make forces in the water be affected by the waves? Mm -hmm. Or is that not important? Maybe, maybe the waves are like not that big, and the boats are quite large, so it doesn't matter that much. The water is just a decoration. I think for I immersion, it's important. And and how cool would it be if you could like send something that would like pick up the boat and actually yeah. transport it like that? That would be pretty cool. Yeah, a massive wave. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I wonder if it's like scope creep. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty much everything is scope creep. <laughs> Well, but that one is a dangerous one, though. It's a dangerous scope. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Claire just linked um, Wave Break. That's a really cool, like, water physics as well. Um... And it also has, like, uh, the 80s synth wave uh, 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 <laughs> style for, um, yeah, for the graphics. And a cool trailer as well, so just like... That, that trailer is so cool. Do you, you have in Tunic? No, I, I was uh, finishing my cappuccino. I have like uh, a coffee maker here that can foam up milk and stuff. It's it's so good, but I lose I use like uh, the I don't even know how you call it in English. Fuller milk. Um, whole milk. Don't you or like unskimmed or what do you call it? Skim, semi skimmed. No, uh, not mm. the milk, not full, full fat. Oh, uh, it's called full fat milk. Yeah, I think it's full fat, yeah. That's what you call yeah. it. We call it whole milk in Norwegian as well. Hell milk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, but Danny. It, yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll hit up Danny, but I think he's too too busy moving. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, your cam is very small on stream, Nick. Sorry? I think your cam is a bit tiny. Is it too tiny? Yes. I Especially for the coffee that you got. Ah, I didn't change the scene, so... <laughs> Let me see. I can uh, change this. So, hi. Now I'm no longer tiny, but I think I'll go back to this one. <laughs> well, that's that's a bit big. That's that's a lot of neck. I got a few <laughs> like thirty second delay on your stream. Ah, okay. Well, there usually is a lot of neck, so. <laughs> My stinger transition. Yes. Very Thank fancy. you. Yeah, I created that. Uh, I think I showed you, right, Christer? Yeah. That uh, it's it's actually not that hard to do in After Effects once you have like the plugin working and and stuff like that for uh, like the the transparent, actually transparent background uh, WebM movie. Once you have that all figured out, it's uh, it's just creating it at After Effects, and that's pretty easy. 
Yeah, those uh, have enough plugins was very important. Yeah. Uh, although you exporting video with transparency was a hassle. Yep. Oh man, I, I worked on a, a video for my wife yesterday. Uh, we have like a wild cam. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I bought two of them and uh, she had like a, a small movie of uh, birds in the in the yard, but they were really hard to see. Let me see if I can pick them up. Um, so I, I said, well, you, you should uh, put a small highlight there so that you can see them better, you know? But mm. uh, so I, I used Premiere to create like a, a HSL mask and uh, invert it and, and create a, a highlight that follows the, the bird. But it was such a, a hassle to do. But once I got it down, it was okay. So uh, I thought, well, okay, I'll, there are two birds and they, they move independently. I can show here on cam. So there's like a, a bird here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. And there is one like off screen. Let me see. It's really uh, it's a bit late. That's all. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see. So there's like a, a bird that goes off screen as well. Nice. So it, it's there is a, a small bird, and in the end, uh, one comes in here in the bottom right. So, but right. if if you don't know where to look, it's like nearly impossible. You think, okay, it's just a, a freeze frame movie. So I created uh, just just to to test it out. I created a small uh, highlighter. So uh, now you have like an actual spotlight, so that you can know what to to focus on. Yeah. So it's still like the the video. It, it's not really usable. It's too small. But I thought, well, at least if you want to so, show something like that, this would probably be the way to do it. Because if you don't, people will not be able to tell so here you see it just moving along and this if, if really without it I, I could barely track it myself but there were two yeah but there were two birds so in in the beginning of the movie of in, in the of the film there's like a bird really fast going off screen and then like halfway through it comes back so I wanted to do like two of those independent spotlights or, or masks but premiere can do that it's it's really weird, but it, it just in the UI, it's impossible to use two inverted masks because if you apply the second, it negates the first. And uh, I was like, if I would just be able to paint like <laughs> the the picture itself that it uses for the mask, it would be very easy to do. But yeah. there are just some scenarios that they uh, they don't think about, and then it can be really hard to implement something like that. But I think you might be able to do something like that in After Effects, don't you? Yeah, you can uh, have automatic tracking and stuff. But before oh. we dive into video editing instead of yeah. game dev, Sorry. Claire had something on her mind. I just wrote it down. I was just I was researching what like uh, the definition of the we, you know, the oh. dash like wind was, and then I just realised this can be meaning back or backwards indicate withdrawal or backward motion. I'm thinking like the pitch in a way could be that you're trying to. Uh, to build, uh, I did down here that you have to send your competitors like to the back and need to get the one that you want to get to the front to win. Yeah, all right, because so, that's like, exactly know, using, what we're going for. Yeah, so this is like a bit of a play on, on the word itself, but using the literal meaning. Mm. So you want to change the, 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 the basic idea a bit? Or? No. No, 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 no. Huh? Same it's, idea. It's the same idea is just using like... Um, uh, Utilizing a bit more of the play on word and the definition of what we uh, and uh, did you put the definition in there? I, I'm putting it in now. I'm okay, just, just, let her type. Uh, okay. Let me no, I'll copy this. <laughs> Why do you not want to paste? Oh. Yeah, I, I had the same issue. I just put it in a like in a text pad and then copied it again and then pasted it and it, it allowed me to do so. Not really yeah. sure why. No, I'm going for a quick toilet break. No, because toilet breaks are not allowed. Bye. <laughs>
By the way, do you guys hear a lot of wind noise from the, the AC running or isn't it no. that bad? No? Great. Because I see like the the audio meter in my OBS. I see it like whirring all the time even when there's nothing going on. So it's good oh, to no, check. You run the thing. No, that's great. Because I have like the uh, the AC is right uh, blowing at me. So, But I have like a, a, a mini... A vocal booth around the mic, so it, it should be shielded a bit. Okay. Do you hear? Oh, come on. Do you hear this? Nope. Hmm. So I can have it on. <laughs> oh, were you having it off just for the audio quality? Yeah. Nah, don't, don't, yeah, just put it on, man. And even so, if it's, it's like, I always prefer to be comfortable and just having like a button for text, uh, like push to talk, yeah. rather than starting to sweat on, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was so happy when I, oh, I, I did a thing where everything minimized. <laughs> yeah. It happens when you shake windows, I think. Yeah. Or uh, if you hold the windows button and press M. Yeah, I, I shake, uh, I shook a window. Yeah. How are we doing? Oh, we're done. We're done? Yeah. Uh, oh, we finished the game, Christopher. We submitted it. We decided to publish on Steam as well. <laughs> <laughs> Could, couldn't couldn't help myself, sorry. I must have been in a time warp. <laughs> okay, let's rewind. Yes, please. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on this jam. <laughs> Type in weather, and I get the weather in Oshawa. I'm like, no! Wrong weather. Wrong weather. Yeah, we should probably make an overview of all the mechanics and etc. I think OBS didn't really like me minimizing th stuff because it's like a uh, bye bye camera. Oh, if your camera is disabled, Nick, um, just right click the camera and deactivate and reactivate it. No, no, the, the camera works fine. It's just OBS is not picking it up. So. Yeah, then you in OBS you can re enable it. Ah, okay, like uh, hide and then show again. Ah, yeah. Let me see. Yep, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah. I counted now. There's um eight second delay for me watching your stream. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's a lot better than like the twelve minutes that I get in your stream. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's. I blame it on the iPad, and and today was especially horrible because I like, I would I would try to put it down just for a second, and it would instantly stop. All the mm. video and then i would get video from time to time and no audio and it, it was horrible i have no idea what's going on but i have like this uni uh, unify amplify uh, router setup like a, a big net mesh network yeah and i think that for some reason like the ipad was on one of the upstairs repeaters or something or, or mesh points and, and not just connect to the one that i was like one meter away from makes just, sense uh, yeah not giant sharks and <laughs> Giant sharks. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and maybe dragons and stuff, right? Yeah. Sounds <laughs> sounds very <laughs> familiar. <laughs> no, I think the dragons will stay in the code. <laughs> That's or ice blocks. Or the dragons. <laughs> So what would uh, what kind of impact would localized rain have on a, on the sailboat? Um, it slow down. Wet. <laughs> yeah, it would get wet. Yeah. Oh, that's so. all it is, yeah. yeah. I don't think wetness would um, contribute too much, but uh, I think it may be slower. Uh, it could actually affect morale or something that they <laughs> uh, that get like a, a a debuff for speed or something because the crew was demoralized from the rain. <laughs> Well, unless they have Heli Hansen jackets, and then they're fucked. Ah, oh, yeah, so equipment them with that. Like, Heli Hansen, here we go. 
No bad idea. Don't start by. <laughs> oh, if you could fix that, that would be great. Like the the, the sponsorship, I mean. Yeah. Water spout. Water spout. Oh, that would be interesting. It's not. It's not a tornado. It's a water spout, isn't it? Hmm. Like from a, a whale or a dolphin or. No, it is actually over water. Instead of having like a tornado, you have these water spouts which kind of come up. Never um, heard of it. It, it, it's wiki, it's wiki word. It's wiki um, word. Clara, link it now. It's like a tornado, right? Basically, just because it's the wind that does it. Yeah. Okay. And they could be moving around as well. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. And of course, if a ship goes into it, it has to be sucked up into the clouds. And then ejected somewhere, or just <gasps> never to be seen black. again. I just thought of something, but you're not gonna like it. Does it involve sharks or lasers? <laughs> no, multiplayer. <laughs> so you could have like um, yes. one one person controlling all the weather, and then like individual people like control the boats and stuff. That's a great idea. Let's ship it tomorrow. <laughs> I do sound it on the memo. Uh, you know, if we finish this game by Wednesday, and you're like sitting there twiddling your thumbs, I yeah, know sure. But, but fifteen boats isn't massive on the multiplayer. You know, mm -hmm. it's just multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Only multiplayer. Yeah. Um, I'll the leave it for later. Um, rising circular gesture. Who's the anonymous hamster? <laughs> uh, that's me. Hi, hamster. Hi, hamster. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know what kind of sound hamsters make. They they squeak a bit, like high pitched. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll let uh, Claire do the. Yep. Yeah. But uh, actually implementing gestures, I don't know if we have a library for that, but actually detecting gestures, if we have to code it by hand, is a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have an asset for it, but uh, I guess we can skip it. Got an asset for that. <laughs> yeah. I got an asset for everything. Oh, no. Cool, so just a, a few clicks and we'll have our game, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, course. great. Sounds That's good. how it works. I was wondering about the player input. Um, that the the weather effects that the um, the map is experiencing are randomly generated or like you know maybe pseudo random. Uh, so for example, if there comes a water spout, that's not something you control. But what you can do is influence its movement. Mm, okay. I thought you were going like in the direction where you can't control which of the weather effects that you're going to get, but you have like a cue that gets assigned to you, and you have to like have a few seconds to decide where you're going to put it and you have your own agenda of like the sequence that you have to uh, oh, achieve approach, yeah. so you have uh, like an extra time pressure for positive and negative effects oh, to place them. that's kind of cool actually that, that makes it a little strategic yep nobody think has to time. Time. <laughs> sorry one at a time i said nobody has suggested that before now so that's great <laughs> as of that what do we say <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Nick was suggesting, like, uh, I think a bit like Tetris, where you have, like, oh, a, a mail form is coming up, you need to decide where to place it. Oh, yeah, yeah. If the rain is coming up, yeah. you need to decide where to place it. But I was thinking the opposite, where these things are just randomly spawning around the map, and you rather, like, throw a bit of wind here, throw a bit of wind there, so you could, like, move yeah. away, throw, but, go. But if that's the only mechanic, it might be a little boring, maybe? Yeah. Yes. Mm. I kind of really? like the Nick's idea here. We, we, uh, we could mix both of them, where you have like um, a certain countdown till you have to place it, but maybe sometimes you have short times in between to manage everything that's active with the wind gust. So you could mix the two ideas if you wanted to. Mm. But I don't yeah. know if that's adding complexity or. I think I like it though, but. We could try. We could just try to implement the first one and see how it goes. I think. I think 
standalone it would be enough for a mechanic and, and a challenge for the game which but of them the one where you have like the tetris queue oh yeah yeah i think you could create it in a way that that would be enough for the entire game and, and we can see if we can tweak it or add on to it hmm. so i think if we uh I say write down the idea, but just let's see if we can build the MVP, you know, the minimal viable product. What do we have to do for that? And then see how we can extend uh, or, or expand on it. Hmm. Definitely, yeah. What are you thinking about, Christopher? Uh, I'm writing down the player control input right in the middle there right now. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, the, the hmm, it sounded like something was still bothering you. No. Uh, okay. So. Uh... Chris makes that sound when he's writing. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Go Rick, make your writing noises. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, put a punctuation sound at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how Mr. Pips works, right? You have your your writing. Perfect. Sounds and your punctuation sounds. Yes. Hmm. Because uh, then uh, right now we have a relatively simple control system. Like you have use your cursor and you place things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but then do the objects you place stay at the location you place them permanently, or do they then like stand moving in a certain direction? You like could. You, yeah, you, you could place have the. the Sorry. You could have like the Angry Birds mechanic, where you yes. place and drag to give direction, but it could have like its own forces applied later so that it, it, it sets off on an initial trajectory and then does its thing. That may be for some things or, yeah. Or maybe uh, that could also, like. yeah, but it could also be that that's part of like the, the constraint that you're given depending on how hard you want to make it. So then the, the actual place where you put it down matters even more. So you could get like uh, confronted with not only the, the sort of weather that you have to place, but also like the direction and amplitude. Hmm. But that could be like a difficulty setting or something. But if you have, I'm just trying to think about the gameplay, if I try to visualize it, you have a bunch of boats mm -hmm. in a, you know, regatta. And uh, then you will try to obviously get them in the right order, which was the goal of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they're kind of close together, I guess the, the trickiness is going to be like uh, trying to like affect boat A, but not boat B, so they can do an overtake, etc. Yeah, for instance. Um, when yeah, that... And also, how is it going to be in terms of like, look, is it going to be top down? Yeah. Top down is the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I was thinking like more like the, the isometric, like how many yeah, degrees is that? Yeah. So not uh, really top down, but at an, a slight angle. Slight angle. Yeah. I agree with that. But you might want to be able to zoom in and out to get a bigger view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. But th I, that's one of the things that I, I don't know yet. Like we could make this two ways. Could You could like have a fixed playing area where like the, the visual area is your playing area and you have like tiny boats and stuff or you could have like something that you zoom in and you don't have an overview of the entire course but that m would also entail that you make like uh, a mini map at least y you could it could be in a, a surprise about what's coming up etc but you would have to find a way to navigate and not get lost and stuff so I uh, think uh, that's that's a better approach or more interesting uh, but rather have like the camera being the average position of all the boats so it automatically follows mm. the boats and how far zoomed out it is would be depending on how far away first and last boats are so you like create the balance around it and then make sure the camera just have them all in focus as they're trying to move through the world that Should... could become problematic if you have like a hurricane ejecting a boat like <laughs> <laughs> Because you'll have like two pixels per boat because the distance would be big. But... Can ships be you destroyed? Just, you could almost have like little, uh, you know, points, waypoints in a way where you can see whether they've flown away type of thing. Like, you know, uh, pins. 
you know, so you can see where they are. Yeah. It's up to us if we want to be able to, uh, like, shit. Or maybe they lose the race if they go outside the screen. Like a Fortnite cloud thing, uh, or how do you call it? Yeah. And if you let it go too far behind. Mm. Scope creep. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> As for the, the end result, uh, we, we talked about having a certain uh, sequence in which they, they arrive. Um, yeah. is that, will that be like a difficulty setting for like, okay, you have to put two boats or three boats from the entire 15 in this order. So like make boat number 44 finish first and boat 27 finish last and yes. ramp up the difficulty to have more boats to manage or? No, you just uh, score it. How do you mean? Like how correct did you manage to do it? Okay, so you, but that would mean that you get like the full 15 list. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like, don't you want to use that for like a difficulty to not overwhelm people? Or do you say, well, there's also like, there's like always a visual for the 15 boats in the sequence that they have to arrive. And you have like a live timer next to it that says you're that far off target or something. That, that is, uh, yeah, that's actually very good. Yeah, I think it only works if you do that. Okay. Uh, but is that maybe too hard then? Like you need to create a, a live like, okay, this boat is in position five, but it should be in position three. Yeah, but that's that's, that's really easy. easy. I can do that. No worries. <laughs> you also have a bit like you could have a difficulty level in terms of, you know, you have How many? boats. Yeah, so that's what I was just gonna say. Like, yeah. if you just want to, the first level maybe should be three boats. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can choose to race with three boats or something like that. And then fifteen is obviously very difficult. Yeah, that's true. But would you make it like an absolute success or failure depending on if you make all of them or do you chart like scales? So like at least five to consider it a success or something. Hmm. I think uh, any race where the boats arrive is a success. <laughs> you know, we created you... a functional game. Yeah. yeah. How are we going to uh, make sure that when you use one of these uh, weather effects that it will affect the right ship or the right ships? How are you going to ensure that your boat is the one that gets in the lead by taking action? I imagine that some of them will have like a, a, a area of effect, like a cone shape effect yeah. where you release or, or get ready to release it. So you will give an indication of where it will go. There are like uh, the, the hurricane stuff. I think it's like a very big risk reward kind of thing where you don't know 100% what the outcome will be or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm thinking as well. So like you could either, if somebody's in front, you need it near the back and vice versa, you can deploy the hurricane to maybe help you. So it will either you could say there's like a probability that it will do uh, like uh, you know issue. over all of a sudden is a, this is a mario kart a racing where yeah. all the players are ai and you're just doing the effects <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of that sounds fitting to me yeah it's uh, sailboats and wind and lightning but you also have it as well that's like that effect that you're going to be placing down it will say it will affect the boat one two and three if you want it to maybe it's a bit more fun to have it's, like no, it's going to be chaos you can, otherwise you can is a puzzle solution yeah no we, we're doing physics and like you, physics. you know clue how it's going to go <laughs> only thing i'm concerned about what if the easiest course of action is to not use your weather effect so you just like throw it off in the corner because it doesn't do anything hmm. which is why i was a bit like uh, keen on having random ones uh, appear as well or something like that that you don't have control of you could make it that uh, every effect that's placed has to target at least one boat but how Cause... Sim simple because you have like the, the the area that you point in and the area uh, of effect if you, for example, want to do a cool timed one where you start a bit outside and then it moves towards it and then like you will hit it at the right time into the future. 
Yeah, but you should be able to calculate that because if, if it's like something that will have a general trajectory and a, a, a time, you could like raycast and, and uh, highlight that area. No, that would be so buggy. Why? I mean, okay, maybe it will work. But then, like, what about the change of future velocity and things like that? Predicting the future is not trivial. Yeah, but... Uh, that's that's true, but what you could do is, like, uh, for the effect, there is a general probability and an angle. So, like, let's say you use the hurricane example. So you could say this effect has, like, a 60-degree angle where it could go and a three kilometer distance so as long as you hit a boat in that cone where you set it up it's valid it doesn't mean that it will hit it you you could do that very easily for every every type of effect only thing i'm wondering like is it maybe bad removing player agency in terms of like placing things how do you mean to allow the player to do whatever they want without limitation yeah, well, you came up with the idea that you didn't want people to just drop things in a corner where oh, it would have no, no effect. That maybe it's just a gameplay issue. I was thinking, like, you can cheat in a way by doing that. But maybe that's yeah, fine. Sure. Uh, the games were difficult enough as it is. But it sounds <laughs> good, so we don't need to, like, restrict the player anymore. It's a bit like, for example, Brackis was talking about the problems he had with some game jams he did, where, like, the easiest solution for the... Um, had a car driving game driving around planets where meteors were falling and the mm -hmm. easiest solution was just drive forward all the time and don't do any turns because that's the lowest probability of you hitting a meteor yeah and i was just like oh so the solution would be to throw a meteor in front of the car if you just have to keep driving forward <laughs> yeah that could happen but with, with this instance you have a different problem but i think it's something that we can tackle later on because like the yeah. adding restrictions in later is something you can always do if there is time. So I, I so far I think we have a fairly solid idea that could work. But it's good to voice like uh, the concerns. Do we hear yay for the sale game? I think we already I have did. Some concerns yeah. still, but sure. What are your concerns? Uh, my concern is that the player doesn't really have enough control over the outcome of. What's right. going to happen? All right, so the gameplay is a bit weak, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that might get frustrating. Uh, mm. But why do you think that? Because, like, all the effects that uh, that arrive will have, like, a positive or a negative effect, depending on how you place and etc. So every time there is an effect, you can manipulate the outcome a bit, right? Isn't that, like, the whole gameplay idea? But maybe you can think about it's not reactive enough. Like, it depends how fast you make them happen or how slow you make them happen. Like, is it, you know? Well, it, it depends on the area of effect of each uh, each weather mm. effect. And it depends Everything on uh, do you have any control whatsoever of the direction of the, the boat that you're trying to make win? Yeah, but that... Use, like, uh, maybe the wind to propel the player in a certain direction uh, while placing uh, the hurricanes at another spot that will yeah. affect uh, other boats. Yeah, so you have like two control mechanisms in a way. So you can control the boat with the wind, but at the same time you can also have the effects or the, the, the weather effects which affect all the other boats. Yeah. Here's an idea. That, I think that might be a bit more interesting. What if there's a timer that every, for example, five seconds your cursor will spawn one of the effects randomly, or you know, you will know what's coming up next uh, on the timer. So you will like suddenly it will start with a hurricane, for example. Uh, but you can always control the wind. Yeah. So, so you can yeah, work. That's what that. I was thinking. So you always have control of the wind, but then the other ones they, they come uh, on a timer or something, which means that you gotta do it. Yeah, that was no. the, the original thing, right? Right. Uh, uh, there needs to be some randomness that you need to react to as well, though. Yeah. Or otherwise, it becomes too easy. Yeah. So okay. maybe things are already in the water, like the obstacles uh, that you need to make sure you avoid uh, mm -hmm. while trying to destroy the other boats. That's a very good idea, yeah, because you you won't have control of those obstacles, but you'll have control of the weather and you'll have yeah. control of the wind. So, yeah. 
Do you want to be able to set waypoints for each boat individually? No. No, no I think just control on the wind. Okay. No, they will all sail towards the goal and then your wind will influence them, I think. Mm. Uh, but then we need to include what I'm highlighting here in the document. Um, drag cursor across screen to create wind. And then that yeah. long, longer is not optional. May, may, yeah, maybe you just set the direction of the wind and the amplitude of the wind uh, instead of uh, having to continuously drag in one direction. I was thinking maybe like the, the wind is localized, right? So it has a very small area of effect that this wind gust you're creating. So it only affect a very few boats, but obviously all the boats are progressing even without the wind because there's like, you know, general progress. Well, do you thinking about like if you do the wind and everything like global? Yeah. All right. But doesn't it affect everybody in the same way then? Yeah, but they are in different positions of map, and uh, depending on their position, they have different challenges, obstacles to avoid, and so on. Mm. True. Like one has rain behind them, so if you push them into the rain, then it's going to go slower. Mm. But that okay. But that can but be really, that... really tricky because there is so much things to account for. Yeah, I wonder if like making it the wind more localized when you created the cursor would be easier for the player to operate and more actionable. But, but couldn't you just uh, continuously propel the player away from the rest of the boats and just simply win the race by <laughs> yeah, but the, more velocity? There's not one winner, remember? There's an order of things, right? Well, the one thing I was just thinking about now is if you had like the bottom screen, for example, or the left-hand side of the screen, where you could see where all the boats are yes. towards the goal in a way, and then you could click on them, and then it would go to that area, and you could see what like kind of obstacles are happening, for example. Mm. That's also very far apart. Yeah. Mm. But at least you could also see what's happening for all of them, see if you're in the right order as well, so it gives you that overview. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, especially if there's a certain amount of folks and you'll have to multitask in order to make sure that nobody or the wrong boats get ahead. So it's uh, almost like a RTS. Yeah, it's not, yes. Certainly not. <laughs> I mean, it adds a bit of complexity, but that's the same like We're having complexity in general. I think that's a necessary UI item for this mm -hmm. to function. see which one you need to focus on, bring back, set down a piece of, uh, what do you call it? Mm. Uh, weather system, which will impede them rather than making them win. Mm. Yeah, I'm but starting you... to picture it now. Yeah, you are? Okay, that's good. Because uh, then we have the player agency and control and everything. And I think, like, obviously, if it was just letting one boat win, it would be easy to just, like, manipulate this boat to win the race, but that's not the case. You need to make um, one boat go in the back and the other one come to the front and one boat, you know. And also I think like how close together are the boats? In general, the gameplay should be closer to you. If you scroll to the bottom of the document, I posted a picture of the sailboat regatta. Yeah, but that's the, like the start of the race, right? It's not like that the entire race. Yeah, but no. how long yeah. are, are the race? That's the question. Yeah, that's something we'll have to tweak, I think. Probably like somewhere between a minute to four minutes or something. I think yeah, it's something to shoot for. Far. Sorry? It's really short. It can't be that far apart and in uh, that time period. And uh, the races should be relatively short. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, for uh, like a, a game jam game, you should be able to experience like the entire game in less than five minutes, usually. Mm. Yeah, that's that, a good idea. That's a good thing to, to aim for because you know there are lots of games to play, attention spans are short, so you have to grab them right away. So I'm not sure if starting with three boats would be the, the correct way to do it, but um, I think you, you need to like get in there as fast as possible. We have to bring them up to speed, obviously, maybe like a very short uh, guided demo or something, and then just drop you into the race. But uh, from everything, and I say this not from personal experience, because this will be my first game jam, but I've seen a lot uh, of people talk about their experiences and uh, 
also from organizing and rating stuff. It seems like the, the general idea is make sure that the new, uh, that the, the core gameplay and the core of your game can be consumed in like five minutes max. Yeah, it's great if it can be replayed or it has more content after that. But you have to like use all your uh, selling points in the first part. I think we'll find the right balance of number of boats later. Maybe it's yeah. seven, for example. Maybe it's five. Uh, that gives a good experience, for example. I think that's definitely something that we can come to when we start adding in the mechanics and placeholders and everything to see I, how it's going to fit together. I really love the look of that little fish uh, fishing boat. Yeah, yeah, it's so cute. It's cute. amazing. I was hoping that we could have some land obstacles, uh, archipelago and stuff like that as well on the map. So things got to, you know, uh, navigate around stuff. But obviously the AI stay moved by themselves through like a waypoint system. Yeah, yeah that's also something to, to consider. Like, how are we going to do that? Like, uh, do you want procedural maps or? Uh, no, just no, no, hard, no. hard code a few things. Okay. No, we, we design a map. A map. And if we manage to design two maps, that's cool. But I think if we More design a map. Yeah, yeah, a good point. But I think like also if you if you can uh, add more boats, it's gonna add more difficulty no matter what. Yeah. So, you know. No. Yeah. You don't need more than one map at the the start. Yeah, I'm just There's thinking about enough run randomness to create replayability yeah what i was thinking is that you could put that in the ai like you have a a, a random start sequence based on the start, starting sequence they could have like i'm going to sail that way around or that way around because there yeah. are, i yeah. think there should be a few choices for path to take mm. uh, should we have different kinds of boats with different statistics that have <laughs> different uh, properties Scope creep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does create a lot of variation just having, say, two, three, three different types. Yeah, that's true. But I was also also thinking like it, you could have like stats for the boat that could be influenced. Like what I said before with the rain, like the the uh, the uh, motivation for the crew that you could like have an efficiency rating at the end. So maybe every boat has like a. a yeah, you could say it's stats, and every boat could start with the same stats, and we can expand it later. But you have like a, a, a minimum st speed, a max speed, and like a minimal wind angle that you need to to sail it. And then you have like an efficiency score for that boat, and you can build on top of that and add stuff that manipulates that as much as you want if you have time. But that could be like the basics for each boat. So you have like yeah. your basic traits and an efficiency score. And you do everything based on those if you want to make it more uh, intricate. It does sound. I'm thinking maybe that different ships react different differently to different weather effects. Like some yeah. ships are faster in the rain and so on. Like a, a or a more stable platform. So some ships are better. Like they have, maybe have a slower overall speed, but they they are better at like high currents and stuff like that. Yeah, you could have all of that, and I, I would all, I would try to make sure that it all plugs into like, in the end, an efficiency score for like the, how how the boat functions. But uh, we can come back to that. The boat's efficiency would aren't we only scoring on the order of the boat's arrival? Sorry. Uh, why are we scoring on the boat's efficiency? Aren't we scoring on the boat's arrival? Or no, no. This this is like to determine how fast the boat will be able to travel and stuff. All right. Yeah, because that's manipulating the race as it's going along. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, if you like, have uh, what he said, like, uh, is you could have different boats. Like, for instance, you have a boat that's a little bit wider, and uh, a boat that is narrower. And like, you could say that at at steady seas, the narrower boat is faster, and at at rough seas, the the wider boat is faster. So you could use yeah. that if you know like which boat needs to win to determine the general uh, state of, of the water there. What did you and want to say? You could have, then you could have like uh, weather forecasts. So you <laughs> have a certain idea how things will play out. Got a point, got a point. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But you could also manipulate that with the, the weather effects. Yeah, yeah. but the, 
the, uh, the forecast uh, kind of determines what kind of weather effects that will come during the race. Ah, yeah, sure. Oh, you mean as a way to introduce everything that's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good call. You could even, yeah, but that's Skull Creek. I was like, uh, like have a weatherman come up to tell you what the weather's going to be and stuff. But... Uh, I think all of this sounds a bit like Skull Creek to me, but we'll have to go forward anyway. Uh, we'll have to start somewhere and see how far we get. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, but like, what as is long the... as we've got the course, you know, concept kind of nailed and, and in progress. That's what the minimal about. part of the game here, I think, is um, like making boats that sail and I could be influenced by force and then have an arrive in a certain order. Right? Yeah. And more yeah. that it's different types of boats and stuff, that's just bonus. That's, that's it, we have time remaining. Right? What is yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a sad face. <laughs> Should we try to list uh, the tasks we know we have to do? Yes, yes. we should. If I want to do it, no. <laughs> Who is who is going to set up the water and stuff, like the the, the general area of the map? Who won? Yeah, I'm up for it, but uh, uh, I'm actually opened a blender now just to concept like uh, scale of things um, in terms of like how big are we imagining the boats, how big are we imagining the worlds, just so we can all get the kind of sense of things. Uh, what I was thinking before. Uh just an idea that popped into my head after uh, Nick was talking about uh, the swimming and the pool and stuff. What if it's not on the ocean, but instead it's like in a small <laughs> swimming pool? That's a good point, right? I, I think that's a very valid point Where there. Where the rubber is, uh, obstacles. Are you, are you have kids like created those weather effects. Like you see a giant hand coming in to swirl <laughs> a, a, a twister or yes. something. <laughs> Maybe that's difficult as well. No, but exactly. Like I think we should try to decide on that. Uh, I think maybe like making a toony tiny world in a way would be cool. Yeah. Like a bathtub kind of thing. With, with yeah, and then you could have like obstacles that are things that you typically find in a bathtub or like toys and stuff. Yeah. There's this like you know. I don't know look that I'm looking for in a beautiful lush world with palm trees on the side. <laughs> but that also kind of messes with the whole uh, Thor Brother. and uh, gambling stuff and so then we need to change ah. that story a bit. But well, it, it, that's not a problem. Gambling for sweets. <laughs> it's, it's children. Yeah. You know. Firegod is covered. covered. <laughs> yeah, but we need to change like the backstory a bit. <laughs> I kind of do kind of like that aspect of it, so it's not like. And then you, know. you could make like your skybox be like a yard and, and have like the. Oh, would you still zoom in so that you don't see the entire tub? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it makes it much more engaging uh, when the things are larger uh, on screen, etc. But will you have actual, actual walls and stuff if, if they go too far or. I'm thinking like, um, as I'm just like find like model out, for example, a racing map right now in Blender, um, that we should have like land around. How do you see that in a swimming pool? <laughs> well, if it's a swimming pool, that would be land around, wouldn't it? Oh, you mean like at, at, the, at the, for the walls, you mean? Uh, edges? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I thought you meant like as obstacles in the race. Oh, that as well, that as well. So like a uh, lighthouse, for example. But obviously with a pool, I wouldn't be a lighthouse there. Well, or... it could be a floating lighthouse. Yeah, okay, I okay. Mean, but maybe it's not a big pool. It's like the, you know, the ankle deep pool. <laughs> well, that might be too small again. If it's yeah. going to last uh, several minutes to get from one side to the other. I don't know. Okay. We'll see, I think we'll just justify this this part later if it's a real or a, yeah good point because i think we'll be working with placeholder assets in the in the start anyways 
Yes. We should try. At least I think the goal is for like once we have the idea fleshed out and what we want to do is to make sure that we have like something playable ASAP with uh, just all placeholder stuff. Just make sure that you have something to work from and get a feel for how it will all work as soon as possible. I'll send you guys a screenshot in not too long of like some ideas I'm thinking. Sure. Because <laughs> it's, it's uh, four in the afternoon here. Um, I think I'll be uh, going to have a barbecue in a, in a bit, like an hour or so. Oh, I was flying by. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. And we're all in the same time zone. Sorry? We're all in the same time zone. Yeah, that's true. We're not all having barbecues. No. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you're welcome to join me, what? but... Uh, you, have to get, get, you have to get on the plane like right now. <laughs> we might not, we might not reach it by that time. Uh, okay, helicopter then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no boarding time. You can just land in the yard. Oh yeah. Sweet. You send us the helicopter. Sure. Uh, <laughs> did you get that sponsorship? It might not be in the budget <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> No, but it's been fun to brainstorm and I think uh, this is going to be fun. I just really, I really need like something to get started with. Like I need the Unity scene to set up uh, and, and have something to play with. Yes. Uh, if at all possible. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I have like 45 minutes to an hour now and I'll uh, be back. I have a dinner in 15. Ah, okay. So yeah, the, yeah, we will all have a break and then I'll take care of the kids and stuff. And I think I'll be back around uh, eight, nine-ish tonight to continue uh, or to actually start doing some work. Sounds yeah. good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Are you looking forward to it, guys? <laughs> this is the moment you've been waiting for your entire life. <laughs> it's all been leading up to this. <laughs> yeah. Feels like it. Yeah, I'm really glad that the, the like the spur of the moment thing. Because <laughs> I've, I've been saying that I wanted to do a game jam for, uh, I can't remember how long now. So, so I'm, looking, exactly. I'm really looking forward to it. I just hope I can pull my weight, you know? Yeah, we all have to all be yeah. going a bit easy. DC? Easy. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. That's why, like, you know, game jams are on 24 hours, uh, 48 hours, because then you can actually take the time you need. Yeah, true. Because I, in my head, I'm constantly thinking, like, okay, how, how does the water even work? And how does it bob up and down? And what do I need to script in order to do that and stuff? Because I've never done that before. So that's why I'm really looking forward to have, like, a, a, the starting point so I can go crazy on this stuff. So I will probably start making menus and stuff if I have some time. <laughs> that's your forte, is it? That's at least something that I've done before. So I can set up like a, a safe area canvas, fix resolution stuff and uh, make at least sure that uh, it looks semi-decent so that you'll have a, a starting point and something. Yep. Um, by the way, which... Uh, Hosting platform do we use? Do we use like GitHub or Bitbucket? GitHub yeah. <clears throat> yeah. is perfect. Okay, do we need... Uh... Actually, don't know. Let's click new. Okay, that works. Uh, private and let's see unity okay maybe you guys should send me your uh, your name so that I can add you to the team or something yes okay I'm sending a picture into the discord I'll probably also put it into the um, I'll put it in discord for now we'll see if we continue with this idea What are you thinking in terms of scale here? Is that looking like something we're imagining? It's a bit neat. 
But I think we can make a really nice poly world out of this. If it's like, I think we've got to restrict it to be in uh, a lake. Oh, I was thinking actually you could almost utilize it as a pond instead. Well, pond or lake is not pond the same word. Well, yeah, kind of, but I was thinking like if we're thinking about it more like... Yeah, the... but guys, this... you, you, you talked about wanting to have it like being a kids playing around. Well, that was other people, not me. Okay. <laughs> Right? That was me. <laughs> right, that was Claire's idea. I, and she actually drafted. You, can yeah. you send a screenshot from your. No, tablet? I don't know. Send Come on, you can do it. Do it. Do it. I'll just take a picture of my pack. I'm thinking it's maybe a little small. Uh, do we? Do the player have time to actually use any of the weather packs before they reach the goal? Okay, yeah. I yeah, can so imagine that can as well. Make it a little bit like, yeah. It's a bit whiny. Probably Sorry, much longer, both the parts of the, the yeah, like yeah. three times as long, maybe. And usually for a race like this, you have like open water and just buoys that you have to go around, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think you need, yeah, you need some area to play with and just like waypoints, but you could have like land tongues and, and stuff like that. Mm. What about uh, like having more archipelago, like I'm drawing in there? I still think it'll be quite fast to do, really. Yeah, we yeah. can. I mean, it needs to scale up like massively. I just didn't have time yeah. to. So here's Claire's idea, where she's drawn a bathtub, bathtub. with a goal at the end of it. <laughs> but you could also. I, I like the concept. <laughs> <laughs> but under the concept. But the only the only issue I found with it is the fact that we don't we would have to make quite a lot of assets ourselves, which is the only thing, because I couldn't seem to find some like rubber duckies and things like that. So. I'm not sure if you're allowed to use it, but Quill18 uh, made like a, a game. I th I actually, I think it's like a default Unity scene where there's like a bathtub. He used like uh, rubber ducks and, and chips and stuff. And he did it for a uh, little there. All right. Okay. T Tub of War, it's called. I can, uh, let me, let me go find it. Quill18 Tub of War. Because we can do open waters instead, uh, but then we have to. I think we gotta like at least lead the player in the right direction, maybe do, with islands or something around it. Yeah. Do you guys have the stream open, or should I should uh, put it in the Discord? Um, yeah, this is kind of perfect. Yeah. Yes, I've seen this before. But this is way too small of a scale to actually use weather influence. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I, I think there's like, if you zoom out, it was some star, uh, default Unity scene that shipped with the editor back then. And he, he used that as a starting point, I think. He created the boats and, uh, and the helicopter himself. Yeah. yeah I think we, we got to move away from bathtubs uh, and into yeah. open ocean. Yeah. Even it might be too restricting. But if no, unless we make no, it a because we have a lot we can use around. Etc. Yeah, uh, to make some islands. And... Should we just yeah. like calculate the average speed of a sailboat, and just calculate how far they can go in in x amount of minutes, and use that as a scale times two? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, idea under ideal condition, I guess the boat should be able to finish the race in two minutes. But by the time you have had your hand in it, they're probably going to take four minutes. Average speed of racing sailboats is 50 knots or 17 miles per hour. So you have to convert that as well, but uh, yeah. cruising sailboat is slower. So racing. Uh. Have you guys ever been on a sailboat? Nope. Nope. I, I've been a couple of times, but not like proper or actually, I had sailing courses when I was a kid. We did have a school. Like, we had uh, six months of the school year where we, instead of like PE, we had sailing. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed that part. But uh, you know, like mini mini sailboats. So because maybe we're going for the realistic sailboats. We should go for the Ayola or that. Um, Ayola. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna send a picture of what I'm talking about. So if if the boat would go in a straight line. For like five minutes, he can do 2.3, 2.4 kilometers. So 
if you'd make it five kilometer by five kilometer, it would be more than enough, probably smaller even. I think three by three kilometers in scale, scaled map size would be enough. Yeah, unless we go in for what I sent in Discord. Okay, let me see. Oh, is this the one? Yeah. I think that is. might make it easier on ourselves if we think in this scale. I can't find an English Wikipedia page. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we okay. don't have to make it realistically, but I think um, if you just look at the, the real stats and stuff for uh, all the baseline info, you can make yeah. it easy on yourself because it will look natural to people that uh, yes. <laughs> know how it works. On the other hand, it might be too slow for it to be interesting. So, but I think as a starting point. Uh, it would be smart to just look at like how these sailboats normally work and then go from there. But it, that isn't too bad, right? If you like have a, a map that's 4,000 by 4,000 units in unity and one unit is one meter. Or yeah. will unity have a problem with that? No, I think oh, that no, that's fine. Yeah. So that, that would be worst case for a fast sailboat. So. I think, yeah, you can you add the the storms and stuff that could multiply that. But I th I think that would be safe to have like a four thousand by four thousand uh, unit piece of water. We need always a bit of um, overlap, though. So yeah, we probably should design to five thousand or six thousand. Yeah, I said like in five minutes you can do two point three at a regular cruising speed in one direction. So if you make it four by four, I think that's enough. But a straight line, for example, a U loop or an L or a yeah, back. exactly. Yeah. So and as always, it's in the end it will probably be just a number that you increase on one game object. So it's not that important, but it's just a starting point. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, good plan. Good plan. Do we need like a task management tool, like Trello? Notion. I say Notion. I don't have Notion. Trello can use it publicly, but Trello might be a good idea. Yeah, we use Trello. Yeah. Or I can just tell Crystal what to do, and he'll put it in Notion. But I don't think that's really efficient. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, we will go with Trello. Oh, do you hear Krista? <laughs> The breaking head is back. He says he's currently making a movement script for his character already. Well, we're still brainstorming and, and fleshing things out. We're all about to, to have dinner. So we'll, uh, mm. I think Z already has to go, right? Uh, soon, four minutes. Yeah. So uh, we'll break for, uh, for dinner it's later your... and get back. Yeah. Sorry? It's, uh, I was asking to see if his uh, girlfriend is happy that we're doing a jam. Uh, she doesn't mind, actually. All right. Hey, thank you for the follow. I just added the, the notification box, so that's cool. Thank oh, you. Almost forgot. <laughs> Yay! I doubled my followers, I think. <laughs> Should I make the GitHub repo? Yeah, that's no problem, uh, the breaking hit. He says that his characters are just squares by now, but... Ah, uh, oh, even more followers. <laughs> I already created a, a repo, by the way, Krista. Nice. I was just about to. Uh, I asked you guys for uh, the, the GitHub username so that I could invite you. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Then, um, yeah. But uh, the only thing I done was created a repo, so it, it's not that uh, not that big of a problem. So. I yeah. then. I, sorry. I, I brought them in Discord. Ah, okay. Let me see. I was about going into settings. Who's creating the Unity Hub uh, project? It's probably best for you to do that, Nick. Yeah, sure. I'll uh, I'll make the initial commit then. Uh, let me Remember see. URP. I guess if we're gonna use uh, Shaded Girl. Yes. I've added Crystal. Do I need? Uh, do you, have you sent yours as well, Z? Yeah, it's C trace. Ah, okay. 
You even highlighted it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the break asked uh, how you save unit projects to GitHub. You basically initialize Git in the root of the thing, but you use a good Git, Git ignore. Yeah. Or you're going to include lots of bad files. Okay. You know what? You can do it if you want, Krista, because the, the, it's just a repo and we all have access to it now. Oh, I mean, me initialize the unit project. Yeah, because you were starting to create a world, right? Um, so I just made it something in Blender, but... Um... Is this dark one? No, I meant with the, the water stuff. Yeah, that was just Blender. Ah, uh, okay. Some meshes in Blender, unsaved or anything. The breaking it uh, has asks, asks, damn, can't speak. Uh, how are you uh, saving Unity projects to get... I answered him, Nick. Ah, sorry, sorry. I'm so uh... I had a... Such a bad uh, <laughs> multitasker. Okay, I'm gonna go have some dinner. I will see you later. Yeah. Enjoy your food. I think we'll uh, stop in a bit as well. Yeah. Enjoy thank your barbecue. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah. thanks so far for all the input. Uh, really looking forward to this, guys. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh. Bye. Bye bye. There's a feather in here. Interesting. Random feather flew in. That's that's interesting. How do I add this to the thingy widget now? Let's see, git. Uh, the git repo get, get thingy. Oh yeah. I've never good. had issues with that. Um this should just come up here, but it doesn't it's easy to that. Repositories. You go here and then click add, don't you? Where is it? Add an existing repository. Create new We're, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and uh, the rest of the team is from Norway. Uh, Snooty, that's Claire and Christer. They uh, run a game dev company, and they, they stream uh, every Saturday. So let me say, uh, I'll post a link in chat that you can follow them if you want. Can you link the GitHub repo, Nick, in um, Discord? Yep, I'll do that. Uh, let me go. Yep, I'll do that. Um, uh, we are from uh, Dick. Dick. Yeah, I, al <laughs> I already answered them, but I had my mic muted on Discord, so you, you could uh, keep talking. What? Yeah, What's very that? very advanced stuff, I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I was missing out now. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Accept invitation. Did you see the, the link? Yep, got it. Yeah. Okay. Open the GitHub desktop. Does that work? Yes. You do Does that. It? Yes. Awesome. Does that now work? If I, I press clone it now. I guess it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, that worked. That seemed to work. Okay, that was the magic button. For me, it didn't, but I always use Tortoise Git. But let me see if I have uh, <laughs> the other client installed. I usually have a private yeah, key loaded, but... yeah. oh, Sushi sounds so good. Oh, it was good. good. <laughs> so we bought like a little bit extra so we can have the dinner as well. Ooh. That's true. We have leftover. Well, then we're talking to my brother as well. What a good way to celebrate anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, and it is. Sushi. 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 Yeah, and stream it. Breakfast delivery. Breakfast. Are you going to cut off a lot of bread, Christmas? Yes, I do have to slice I the bread. This is, the this is adorable. Uh, I googled polygon ocean something. Polygon? I don't know. Polygon ocean. Yay! I have the the thing and it has a git ignore file from, uh, from GitHub. I'm not sure That's if you it. need to add more to it, but... Uh, at least it's uh, set up now. Uh, Sorry? I'll try to add in the project. Ah, okay. Oh, now that I uh, think of it, we could also create like a stream team, I think, so that it will be broadcast to all the team members at the same time and we'll have like a link. 
I've seen that before uh, from offline TV, actually. Are you talking about Twitch or? Yeah, on Twitch. Oh. So if you want to uh, have a separate stream or something, you could uh, have like a, a different viewpoint stream at the same time and have it part of a, uh, like a, a team, I think. So I think for all the team members that are not currently streaming, it will just pick one of the active streams for the team members. Okay. But uh, not really high priority. I think uh, <laughs> we'll put all the effort into this first. But just something that came to mind just now. I'm a fan of Polygon Boat you're talking about. Let's that. Do an image search for it. No, I can't drag this in. And I can't save the image. All the only thing I can do is just do this, I guess. I, I, I can be find it, Claire. I have, to try I have it in my history. I'm mean, just search it. Okay. Uh, I think I'll uh, I'll quit streaming for now and uh, pick it up later. Okay. Is there anything else we need to discuss right now? Nah. I don't think so. Um, we can probably divide tasks a bit better later, but let's, yeah, see if we get a starting point first. Great. Thanks so far. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, I'm uh, really looking forward to jumping back in uh, later. Oh, right, Claire. Here, here's uh, this phone. Yeah, I found it now. You found it, did you? Yeah, it did. It was on Pinterest. It was on but Pinterest. I don't know what the original source is. Okay, so for everybody that's still Dribble. watching, thank you. Uh, Article. We'll have dinner right now and uh, rejoin later tonight. So, Does the stream thank stop? you. Bye bye.